Well, welcome back everybody to the Kit Plane Enthusiast YouTube channel and the Army themed Zenith Super Duty build. In the previous episode, we installed these door seals on the, the cabin. And today we're going to get started building the actual door frames. Well, we're starting off here with these top pieces. They are now installed and drilled both on the passenger side and the pilot side. These are the pieces where the hinge for the doors will get riveted to. And to fit the doors in the door frame here, what I've done is I've taken some of the Clecos, you can see, and I've put them uh, up from the bottom. So if we look on the inside here, you can see some of the Clecos. On the very bottom piece right here, where I couldn't fit a Cleco on the bottom, I actually just installed a rivet. And when I'm done fitting the doors, I'll drill that rivet out. Same with up here. This Cleco here, I'll wind up taking out and installing a rivet just so I can build the door frames in here. And it's kind of a sacrificial rivet. Once I'm done, I'll drill the, the rivets out that I had to put in there. For this back piece here, I remember this when I built the cruiser. Instead of temporarily riveting this, I just put masking tape around here and that was enough to hold it in place. So that's all I need to do for that. So the airframe is just about ready for the doors. I should also point out that you will need to trim this part here, which is part of the side skin. You'll have to trim it sort of flush with your door seal. So I had to trim about a quarter, a quarter of an inch off the back of that. On my workbench here, I have laid out all of the parts I will need to build the doors. I have the instruction manual out and I have the plans. One of the things I wanted to point out that's important is these two pieces here look almost identical, but they are different. So uh, if you're building these same doors, when you take all these labels and, and separate all this, when you take everything apart, go ahead and write the part numbers on here because uh, otherwise you'll have them mixed up. So this is it. This is the door frames right here. And then this is the, the both of the hinges. So I will separate all this, divide it in half to build one door and get started. I noticed with these four pieces here, we have two different part numbers. We have a dash 10 and a dash 11, which I've written on the parts, but they are exactly the same. So I'm hoping it's not a mistake from Zenith and they are supposed to be the same, but uh, we'll see how this goes. A tip I have is to make sure you pay very close attention to the orientation of these pieces, especially this one and this one. You'll notice that they have bends in them and I have marked the bends on mine just to show you where the bends are at. So it's very important to keep these pieces organized. There was one more piece I found that was hiding from me. It's this piece, it's the same as this, but this goes on the inside of the door and you can see it has the hole cut out it for the door handle. So these two will stack on the door like this. So there's two of those. Well, the first step I'm going to do is I have my top door frame piece laid out. That's the dash 10. And I'm going to cut the angle on the front. And if you want an easy way to find that angle, just put your gusset on there, draw a line, and you'll have the correct angle. I have cut the front of this hinge to match the angle of the door, like that. And when you cut this angle here, you're gonna have an extremely sharp point right there. Don't leave that on there. Make sure you round that off. If you look in your instruction manual for the doors, one of the first steps is to drill a line of holes in your hinge. This is the top hinge. Once you drill those holes, you'll match drill those into your top door frame piece. 
And then what you see me doing here is countersinking each of those holes for a flush mounted rivet. The hinge pin for the doors gets cut into two pieces and they get inserted from the middle. So you will need to remove a couple of these loops from your hinge. Again, look ahead in your instruction manual and it clearly explains uh, what you'll need to do for this. After those loops were cut off, I'm just using a file to smooth out that edge. And of course I'll use sandpaper to, uh, to really clean it up. And you can see here how it works. This gives you a gap in the hinge so that you can insert the pins on both sides. Now the fun part is you get to match drill all of those holes into your piece that's on your cabin frame. You'll notice in the very front there I have a Clico. That was the first hole I drilled. And I'll drill one towards the back here, Clico it in place, and then I can go through and rivet or drill the rest of the holes. As I'm positioning this on here to drill these holes, to mount this top hinge. I have on the bottom of this, or I guess the top of this tube, I just taped some popsicle sticks here. And that gives me when a door is closed, the space that I want in there. I don't want this touching that. That gives me a little bit of space. And if I want, I can put that sticky back foam in there to kind of make like an air seal. But uh, so that's what I did, I just taped Tape some sticks in there to give me a little bit of a gap. And now it's a nice even gap. And I can just go and finish drilling out the rest of all those holes. Well, what you just saw in the video I did yesterday, and it literally took me all day yesterday to do that. It's a lot of work to drill all the holes in these top pieces. And it's a lot of work to put the hinges on the top of the door. I now have the pilot side done and the passenger side done. So right now everything is even as far as the left and right. And then I think from now I'll take one door, build say the passenger door, then I'll build the pilot side door. But I wanted to get both of these done just because this is the most work right here. And I just thought it'd be nice to get them both done right away. Notice in the instruction manual, it shows the top hinge gets riveted to the side of this piece here that gets connected to the uh, cabin frame. That is exactly how I have installed this on my Super Duty. But I want to show you one more option you might want to consider. Notice that I did it a little bit differently on my cruiser. There is no top hinge here visible. And that's because I mounted the hinge on the bottom of that side piece instead of the outside. I like it better because it does hide the hinge. And I thought about doing this again on the Super Duty, but it is a lot more work to do it this way. And the only rivets you're gonna see are a few rivets here. And I just decided that on the Super Duty, it's not worth all the extra work to do it this way. So to make this quicker and easier for myself, I am installing this exactly per the plans. Moving on to the door frames, you can see here, this is the top of the front tube I have cut to match the top. I have my wooden spacers in between the steel frame and the door frame. That gives me the 3 16th inch space that I need. And that front tube, I just have taped to the steel tube. And moving to the back, I have the top of the aft tube cut, just like the front. I have my 3 16 inch spacers, and I have that tube taped to the post. And on the bottom, you can see I have my spacers ready to go for the bottom tube. And the next step will be to get that curved bottom tube and cut it so that it fits between the front tube and the back tube. With this bottom tube, I've already cut off about an inch from the front and you can see in the back how long this tube is and how much will need to be trimmed off. You will want to note that in the back there is a little bit of a gap left between the bottom tube and the back tube. Well the bottom tube now is cut and fit between the front and back tube. I do have to trim the back just a little bit more but I want to show you why they want a gap 
between these two square tubes. Can you see how these two tubes do not sit square with each other? And that's because the fuselage is tapered. So the inside or the front corner of the door sits more inboard than the back corner. So these doors, like if they don't, they won't sit flat on a bench and you'll see that later on. Uh, but that's why they want a gap right here. It lets this door sort of bend a little bit. And so you can see how I'm touching on the inside, but I have a little bit of a gap here. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll take that bottom piece off and trim off another 16th inch or so to widen that gap. Well, I've trimmed up the back a little bit more. I have the gap just how I like it. And one of the things I wanted to show you also, you're not gonna be able to tell in here, but if this was say a 90 degree cut like this, I actually have this back cut on an angle like that, but you'll notice with that angle in it, it fits perfectly to that back tube. One of the other suggestions I have for all of these tubes, but especially this bottom one, is to uh, cut less, cut off less than you think you're going to need. For example, on the front here, I had to make three or four cuts to get it to fit right. And then back here, I've cut this one two or three times. So cut it a little bit larger than you think you're going to need and keep fitting and cutting down just a little bit. That way you don't cut too much off. All right, guys, that completes the passenger side door as far as cutting and fitting the square tubes. While this is all fresh in my mind, I'm going to step over to the pilot side and get all those tubes cut. And then both doors will be in the same spot as far as the construction goes. So in the next video, we will start installing these gussets that go in each of the corner of the doors. After those are installed, we can get it riveted and then start working on the door handles. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. If you don't mind, give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along on the rest of the build. And uh, we'll see you again on the next video. Thank you.